Hi everybody, welcome back to another multimeter review. My name is Darren Walker and enjoy the show. Today we're looking at the XL DT9205A. This is a non-auto ranging multimeter, um, an expensive multimeter. Retails approximately $15 US out of Asia. And as I had mentioned, it is non-auto ranging, but it is, um, in my experience at least, a fairly accurate multimeter. I've been using this on the bench for a couple of years now, and um, I pick it up quite frequently when it comes to quick measurements, continuity testing, what have you. So, although it isn't inexpensive, and really it's not meant, as we'll see later on when we take a look at the insides, it's not meant for high voltage or uh, mains work. Um, for low level electronics, troubleshooting, Got a monitor, a video display that you want to uh, do continuity on, looking for bad capacitors, transistors, what have you. This is a really good meter for that. Pull it out when you need it, put it back when you don't. In terms of real estate, it is a fairly chunky meter. Um, fairly large. Um, so, you want to make sure you have some room on the bench. Um, has a nice little standing bale. Doesn't flop around. But it does the job. Comes with the yellow holster, which I've removed temporarily. But uh, holster is kind of PVC, cheap-ish kind of quality. Um, that being said, this has actually fell off the bench um, at least three or four times onto a ceramic floor, and uh, it's still working. So, yeah, in terms of the overall robustness it is quite robust what we'll do quickly is we'll start off with a voltage accuracy test with our ever grateful 8584 voltage reference so i will plug in the leads now these are not the leads that the uh excel originally shipped with um like I said, I've had this meter for a few years now, probably two and a half years, and I have no idea where those leads were. They were the typical generic uh, Chinese-style leads. These are also cheap Chinese leads, um, which I picked up off of Flea Bay, but really no comparison. They have sharp points and um, gold contacts, and uh, they work really well. Actually, you know what? We're on the continuity setting right now, so... It's non-latched, but as you can see, it's very quick. And uh, in terms of continuity, this thing is great. I've used it hundreds of times now to repair countless uh, um, monitors. Been on many projects, and yeah, no complaints at all. The nice thing about the continuity feature as well with the XL DT 9205A is not only is it an audible continuity, but you have a visual. The LED here is really great. Um, Something I don't see in a lot of multimeters, whether they're expensive or not. But for a cheapy multimeter, it's always nice to have that visual indicator as well. Okay, so I'm going to select 20 because it is a non-auto ranging multimeter. And we're going to start with a voltage test. And we're going to start with 2.5 volts. So let me just hook things up here. Alrighty. Now this 584 has only been warming up approximately five minutes. Ideally, it's good to have it going for around 15. But let's get started anyway. So now we're showing uh, 2.46 on the Excel. And the voltage regular itself is showing us as a 2.500 reading. So not far off spec. We'll go up to 5.0. And you can see the Excel is showing us as 4.95 volts. Going up to 7.5, XL showing us is 7.43, so 7 counts off. Finally, at the 10 volt setting, we are showing 9.92 volts, 8 counts off. So all things considered, is it is in spec. Um, not super duper accurate, but uh, close enough for everyday uh, electronics and troubleshooting. Alright, so now we're going to do a 
battery rundown on the XL DT9205A, we'll see just how low can you go, XL. Um, I'm introducing a newcomer to the multimeter reviews. It's a Proba 903. This is a pretty unique multimeter. It's dual channel, and you can do measure um, micro and milliamps at the same time, as well as voltage. You have a dual display, as you can see. I'll be doing an in-depth review on the uh, Prova 903 in the not-too-distant future, but I will be using it here for this uh, battery demonstration. Okay, so currently we're at 9.1 volts, and the XLDT9205A is powered by 9-volt battery, so we'll see if we can, how low it can go in terms of maintaining a relatively stable um, display uh, at the lower voltages. So we're going to start to bring the voltage down taking it down a notch here down to 8.9 volts 8.6 volts 8.5 okay so currently we're at 7.7 .7 volts 0.12 microamps and as you can see there's no problem in terms of the XL DT 9205A take it a bit lower okay so we're currently at 6.5 volts 6.579 by the way, this uh, Prova 903 is a uh, 60,000 count, so it's pretty high resolution, and um, it's very verbose. As you can see, we're at 6.577 volts, and the XL DT9205A is doing well. No flutter, stutter, taking it lower, and now we have the low battery indicator coming on at 6.2 volts. All right, so we'll keep going a little bit further, further. 5.3, 4.9, we still have a relatively stable DT9205. How low can you go? We'll keep going. 4.8, 4.7392, 4.6, and we still have a relatively intact XL DT9205. Keep going down. 4.0. Four point three two six five, and still the XL is there. Okay, we're starting to see a little bit of flutter now at four point two four volts, and now the XL is starting to give us a little bit of flutter. How low can it go? Well, probably not too much lower. Three point nine seven volts, and a lot of flutter, and we'll just keep going down till it shuts off. And there you go. So just under four four volts. Three point six. Three point seven volts. Okay, completely dead at 3.3. All right, so that was interesting. So uh, this is a 9-volt battery-powered multimeter, and um, yeah, you should get a fairly long battery life. So basically, it started to, uh, the low, late, low battery uh, level indicator came up at around 6 volts, and... That was no problem, still able to maintain its uh, stability up until around four and a half volts. Then it started to become unstable and it completely died just under four, four volts. So there you have it for the XL DT9205A. How low can you go? Well, in this case, four volts. Okay, so um, just some basic quick testing here. Here we've got a good old 10 mega ohm resistor. This being an non-auto ranging multimeter, as you can see, we've got it set to the 20 mega ohm range. And we'll just see how close we get to 2 to 10 mega ohms. So there you have it. So 10.04. So close enough. Next, we're going to try a diode test. So we'll switch it over to the diode setting. I've got a blue LED light emitting diode here. And we'll just see. The XL can light this guy up. And there you go, no problem. Corner right hand of my screen, but yeah, the blue LED is lit. Okay, we're going to go over to the capacitance range. Now this only goes up to 200 microfarad, so not a super high capacitance range um, if you do a lot of higher levels. Um, 
you're gonna need uh, a different device for that but uh, for this sake I've got a um, non-polarized uh, 22 microfarad uh, electrolytic capacitor so I will put it to the 200 microfarad range always go up in range it's 22 microfarad so you want to do the next step up which in this case is 200 and we'll just see how close we get <clears throat> this is a little awkward obviously now this is non polarized so it doesn't matter which way the leads are connected and oops okay that's a good good thing to point out with this device you have to take out the positive lead and put it here when you're measuring um, capacitance so we will try this one more time and there we are 21.2 so super fast yeah so take note you do have to change the positive lead when you're checking capacitance um, if you go up to 200 I've been able to check um, I think up to 200 and oh, I don't remember the range now but um, anyway in terms of the capacitance setting it is pretty snappy so um, it's just too bad the range isn't higher now we're not going to test the current today um, but what we will do next is take this puppy apart one feature I want to point out briefly on this uh, 9205 is like I said I do use this a lot for the continuity feature and here's why um, look at the red LED the continuity LED look how fast I'm going along that trace and it picks it up every time so it can literally race along a track and that LED is going to tell you right away whether or not you have continuity. So fantastic, fantastic meter for, for troubleshooting um, LCD displays, for instance. And um, it really, really pays for itself a hundred times over in that respect. Um, it doesn't mind if it gets dirty. It doesn't mind what you throw at it. Um, no fancy ratings on this. Um, no IP waterproof weatherproofing what have you um, like I said for basic low-level electronics when you want to do stuff like uh, troubleshooting circuits uh, main boards um, display boards on uh, LCD monitors power boards what have you this is a great 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 multimeter and uh, you just saw how well that works in terms of uh, finding uh, continuity so yeah highly recommended for that okay so here's the inside of the uh, 9205 nothing special as you can see um, one thing you notice right away is the uh, the cutout for the display is quite large uh, larger than most meters in this price range so you are you do have more real estate in terms of the um, the unit taking up but the PCB size is, is quite small but once again that is because they are giving you quite a large display and that takes up space obviously um, it's a fairly light meter um, actually it's quite light so even though it looks large or it looks big it's it's very nimble in your hands nine volts <clears throat> is the power source here we have our standard inputs um, they are just soldered in they're being retained by the plastic housing here some people don't like this method once again for a cheap oh, 15 12 dollar meter this is perfectly fine uh, as long as you're not going to use this for any sort of high voltage You've got nothing to worry about now right away you will notice that there is no fuse it is missing a fuse so it says fuse um, 0 0.2 amp uh, 250 volt now here you see it says fuse as well so i believe the fuse is actually soldered onto the main board instead of using the regular glass fuse now maybe somebody can uh, give me a little bit more info on this I'm not sure how this works in terms of what happens when the um, if you accidentally flow your fuse do you uh, fry, fry, fry your fuse rather sorry do you have to desolder this I'm assuming and put in a new one so um, yeah 
There is obviously an opening for a standard glass fuse, but it is not here. I don't know if I can get in a little closer for you here. I'll try. But here, as you can see, there is a small uh, semiconductor, and uh, on the PCB itself, it is also written as fuse. So I'm assuming it is um, soldered onto the main board itself. Typical glob of goo for the main IC, just your generic uh, guy. Here we have the, uh, the date on this uh, board is August 28th, 2015. So yeah, that would make sense because I bought it late summer uh, 2015 so two yeah about two over just over two years ago um, we have one PTC standard piezo and your other generic um, uh, resistor array what have you uh, a couple of diodes um, looks like a trim pot over here um, some capacitors. So yeah, like I said, nothing, nothing over the top. Uh, very basic in terms of build quality. Uh, but you know that's not always a bad thing. Um, the other side of the unit here. Now you notice there's no shielding on this, so uh, that's too bad. It's always nice to see some shielding on a multimeter. The uh, 9205 has nothing. Um, but that's it, I'm not gonna go uh, any further. Not a whole lot to see underneath. You'll have your typical uh, selector switch with the um, little ball bearings. Um, this is the, uh, the um, display pad that, run, that runs along the uh, length of the uh, PCB. Your standard zebra connector. And um, yeah, so all in all, basic, uh, no frills, does the job, that's it, that's all. Okay, so I'll put it back together and I'll come up with my final analysis. Alrighty, so one thing, um, last thing to test actually, it has a little uh, built-in transistor checker, NPN or PNP, and there you go. So emitter-based collector, I don't know, this function some people don't like. I think on a cheap multimeter, why not? Added feature, can't hurt. Um, the selector switch itself, feels good, sounds good. Um, I use this guy hundreds and hundreds of times, so uh, no complaints. Uh, for a cheap meter, great selector switch. The display, as you can see, is nice and big. Um, if you wear glasses, or perhaps you have some eyesight uh, problems, you'll appreciate the fact that display is quite large on this meter. Um, and that also helps because this has no backlight. Um, but the saving grace to that is the fact that, once again, nice, big, crisp display, um, nice, bold LCD numerals. So yeah, even in low light conditions, you shouldn't have any problem uh, reading this. Generally speaking, um, I would say go out and grab one of these. I think it's a steal for $10, $15. Um, everybody should have one on their workbench, in a drawer, somewhere in the house. I mean, compared to the smaller DT830s or the 30 variations out there, this guy is bigger, but um, it just performs really well. And like I said, if you do any sort of uh, troubleshooting, um, circuit testing, you need that continuity feature, this thing is just super great. So um, yeah, highly recommended. Uh, I'm gonna give this a solid four out of five stars. Thanks for watching everyone. Until the next video, keep on testing.